New birth is a name that will never be forgotten. With the bishop that you had and were favored to have and with the man of God you're honored to have now, I tell people, let me talk, let me talk to you about him. He is a prophet in his own right. He is probably one of the most key voices in America at this time. He is a mover and a shaker. He puts fear in weak people's hearts. One of the most intelligent people with a phenomenal testimony and story. I've known him for 31 years now. 32 years. And uh, I've watched him come through hell and high water. And I think, if you all understand me, that God called him to you, because if not, he probably would be vice president <laughs> of the United States of America. Now, you don't believe me, but I'm telling you what I know. All right, I have prophesied into his life for over 31 years. I told him in the back, I don't feel like prophesying. He said, oh, no, no. I said, I just want to teach. He said, that's what I do. I don't need you to do what I do. I was confused by what he meant by that. But when I first met him, he stood on the side of a wall at a church where we ran a revival for 31 days. You couldn't get in. Uh, it was some crazy things happening that I hope don't happen here today. But it was some crazy things happening. And... um. He was standing on the side of the wall and I called him out. But what he didn't tell y'all for three four cool jumper for me is he told me this ain't real. He said, I'm AME and this is not real. Now he doing what I'm doing and I want to know, is it real yet? Because, <laughs> but he is one of the strongest voices in America, internationally known a voice that is prophetic for our day, the Honorable Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. Come on, get louder than that. Get louder than that. You could not have gotten a better pastor and most of them that tried to come here, I know them and I told some of them, don't go, Jamal gonna be the pastor. He had me at his former church telling me to tell them prophetically he wasn't coming back. <laughs> it was like Harlem Knights, kiss the kids, baby. I ain't coming home. I, I said, what have you done? He said, I'm the pastor of the greatest church in America. You prophesied when I was 19. I didn't think it was real. Let me tell you something. I need to stop and say something to 300 people who will jump. I came here to, to preach something that's prophetic because God told me as I've been watching y'all tell everyone after August I'm giving them financial reset, right? Watch. Now, be seated. I need five more minutes. I'm from Brownsville, Brooklyn, so I ain't scared of nobody. I just need to know from Dr. Bryant, because this church too big, but I want to know from Dr. Bryant, are all your security guards supposed to look serious? They've been trained to look serious? Mm. I didn't come here alone when I announced to the church that I pastor that's watching, which is Shabbat Church of Apopka. Can y'all clap for my church out there in South Apopka? My church members decided they weren't going to church. So some of them flew in here because I see them. Y'all know I see y'all, don't you? They supposed to be in church. 
But when they heard we were coming to the historically new birth with one of the greatest voices, some of them said, Pastor, please don't let us stay home. Even my assistant pastor, Stan, Frank Mixon is here. My deacon, Stan Mays is here. My vice bishop, Brian Pleasant is here. My personal executive assistant, uh, Bishop Keith Curry is here. It's just so many people. My deacon and his wife, Deacon Jackson. Deacon Jackson is on dialysis. He can barely make it at times. He said, I'm gonna have to shift and get dialysis in Atlanta. He and his wife just celebrated their 20 something anniversary. Stan, Deacon, Kevin, and Patty, we appreciate them as well. Uh-oh, I feel God. Now I'm, I'm, I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. I, I want to thank God for the rest of you, but I can't now. I want to say something. There are people here who don't believe that they can be debt-free in 30 days. But I want to give you an example, and I'm going to watch your behavior. And if you don't praise them, then I'm the wrong speaker today for now. But let me say this. When that glitch happened last week, can I walk around here too? All right. When all the planes were grounded, banks made you fill out written deposit slips like you were in the 80s, hotels canceled reservations. The Lord told me, and I only told my church, but now that I can tell the world because of this platform, I'm going to do this and the first 300 that really praise him, it'll happen. God says, because of the glitch that is still not fixed, God said, I can erase your mortgages. I, I can do anything I want to do. Yep, this is going to be good. He could delete student loans. He can do, he can do whatever he wants to do. Huh? Just because he wants to. Be seated. So I expect that to happen by the end of August. Let me tell another story. Years ago, about five, six, seven years, only you would remember, I'm, I'm always at times called the false prophet because I don't agree with a lot of prophets. So y'all pray for me. I didn't know I was a prophet. Somebody had to tell me. No, seriously, y'all in the front, I'm telling you the truth. I'm just a little storefront back in the day, holding this preacher, carrying the gospel. And everywhere I went, they said, that's Prophet Hall. And I was looking for him. Uh, I said, Prophet Hall, I had to start studying what a prophet was. But I need to tell you something. Years ago in this city, I went to a church, a very wonderful church. And I said to the whole church, that the class of, I can't remember the year that goes to Morehouse, I said, God says, all of your student deaths will be canceled. They went off, started screaming. Bishops came in the back and said, Prophet Hall, can we talk to you? I said, uh, I said, yes. Now listen, man, we enjoy you, but don't hype people like that because, you know, student debt is student debt. That comes along with life. I said, man, I know. I went to a HBCU. I mean, you ain't talking to me. I said, I had to pay mine. He said, well, these kids, man, we're trying to encourage them. So just don't uh, do that too much. And I looked at him and I said to him nicely, don't bring me back. I said, because um, it's obvious that we have different belief systems. I get a call from him 30 days later, Prophet Hall. I say, hey, what's up, man? Need you to come to church. I said, uh -uh, I told you don't bring me back. No, I'm crazy. I said, uh, what's, what's up? He said, man, you a man of God. I said, what you talking about? This is what he told me. He said, we went to graduation and a man named Robert Smith 
stood up in front of the whole class. Oh, all right. Oh, y'all didn't hear. And paid off every student debt of that particular class. Before I tell two more stories, there was a young boy working over here. He had on a, a, a light blue shirt. He was light skinned. Where is he? Because I can't see everybody. He was in this section, one of the workers. He was a young boy standing about this high, light skinned, wearing one of them lighter blue shirts. Not, he didn't, he didn't look as serious as these gangster security guards. He was, I know he's somewhere around here. If he can hear me or see me, I need to see that young man. I also want to say there's someone watching or in here who God's going to start paying off her debt right away. Somebody shout right away. Her name, the Holy Ghost speaks to me, is Iris Grandison. Her name is Iris Grandison. And along with this particular person, and if you're in here, don't sit on your prophecy. Along with this particular person, there's a man whose whole family God's going to bless and make him wealthy. This man's name sounds like Dwight Baker. Who's Dwight Baker? Who just screamed for him? Do you know him? Excuse me? He's in the choir. Do any of you know him personally? Text the white baker, tell him he should have been here this morning. As a matter of fact, yeah. Uh-uh, he a little lighter skinned than him. He light skinned. He was on this side. That's him? Come here. Hello. I'll get back with, with y'all in a minute. Text. Text Baker, tell him he's about to be supernaturally blessed and tell him God's about to give, hold on, and God's about to give a new like hip joint and heart to a woman named Beverly. That's his mother? All right, well, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm. Hey, where you taking him? I told you bring him here. Yeah, name is Beverly, and God's about to do that right now. All right, so. All right, well, tell him what I said. My name ain't Cleo. Tell him what I said. No. I'm old, y'all. Mm -mm. How old are you? I'm going to have you run down one of these aisles. Can you run without falling? All right. When you run, I want you to, somebody shout glory to God again. Uh-uh. Were you ever standing over there? You were? And what were you doing? Yeah, that's it. Passing out envelopes ushering. Don't be afraid. I got good news for you. I ain't going to tell your mama no secrets. When you run up the aisle and come back, the Lord says, tell him, I'm going to move him into advance. I'm going to speed up his education two years. The Lord says, you will get a full ride scholarship to any college of your choice if you run down that aisle right now. Sure will. Sure will. Thank you. Um, and there's another man God wants to bless. It looks like his last name is Leonard. Do I have any Leonards in here? Please, if you're here, scream out your name because this man is traveling back and forth. His name is Dave, David Leonard. Hold on, let me say something to the man with the bald head, blue jacket, stand up. Come to me.
Are you married? You're about to get recompense for over 20 years of private dilemmas that I will not divulge. Everything the devil thought he could strip you of and make you start over and not be able to elevate your head, by midnight tonight, it will all reverse and come back in your direction. Watch it. Watch it. The glory of the Lord, and I don't touch people much, but I'm going to touch you. You can check me online. I don't touch a lot of people. But I need you to know that the glory of the Lord is going to satisfy you for over 20 something years. And when I touch this man, anyone that has been waiting on something over three, four, five years, this will be your chance to speed up the process by thanking God for him in Jesus mighty name. I bless God. Step out here. Then I gotta preach. Where's your wife? Bring your wife. Two things are happening. One, whether you receive it or not, God is producing a healing in your entire body. You. Two, God says, tell them, I bless them momentarily, but tell them, go looking for another home. Tell them they will rent one and own the other. Tell them. You running, but you should be a preacher. You running. God says, you're a prophet like me, just not like other people. You're a prophet. Some folk think you're crazy, but they're going to find out something after the day. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're quiet, I can't help you because... Come close. You're going to need two ushers. I got two people. Amen. I want to lay hands on both of you. This is the first church in a long time that I've touched more than two people in years. It's not because I'm not anointed. I don't want what's on you. That's why the Bible tells the preacher, lay hands on no man suddenly. Somebody shall raise your hands. When I touch these people, all of you that are renting and tired of renting and ready to own but you need God to give it to you at the most ridiculous incredible yeah when I touch this lovely Kashana Bahoya Mansia all right we're going higher I need somebody to join y'all who need a miracle with homes and money too jacket white pants come out White hair, black and yeah, come out, stand here and bring her too. Come on out here. We're going to buy one, get one free. Who's coach? That's you. All right. All right. When I've laid hands on these two couples while you're praising God and sustaining noise, God says, I'm going to fix your credit. I'm going to get you in your homes. Hold on. Stop. What's being built on this property? Something's coming. Where well, some of them will be living on this property. I'm going to have you, I know you don't like doing it because I know you're older now, but we're going to act like you that you 20 again. <laughs> now, I want you to be an example to your people how these miracles work. I'm going to have you run across the line and back. Someone's not going to believe it, but God says, tell Jamal 
because he desires to see these people blessed. I'm going to cause not the number you saw on paper, but close to a billion dollars to be donated concerning this church. I don't know what's going on. God said you called it a miracle, but God said the numbers are too low. He's I'm sorry. Let me get to these couples. Thank you, Jesus. You have children. What's the sex of the youngest child? God is going after this child. Uh-oh. Don't worry, we're going to run one more time because I hid something from you. But we're going to... Now that you told me, be me. I'm going to be me, but I ain't going to preach on But now I'm going to be me because I came up here nervous. But now this church done shrunk to a storefront. Be you. God is going after this child. God said, I will relieve you of all the worries concerning your children. You're getting a new heart. You're getting a new heart. Your valves, everything, whatever you've been nervous about, God said, tell them ease up. Because I'm going to heal them by 3 p.m. today. He come a whole shit on that. When I lay hands on the two men and then these women, sustain your noise as if you're watching the walls of Jericho come down. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. You're going to move out of where you are and you're going to live in houses you have not built. Do it now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, come on, Shia, and him on so kind. Father, I thank you. I thank you. Young man in the shirt, come here. Come closer. Years ago, over 20 years ago, I prophesied the success of one of the greatest gospel singers or writers we have, which was Jonathan Nelson. Oh, he ain't tell you that. I'm telling you. I told him he would travel the world and do A, B, C, D. Yes, yes, now I'm talking to you. Yeah. I don't hear them, I'll show you. Jonathan, stand behind him. And God is gonna give you and a wife a new three to four bedroom home because she will have a girl. Y'all ain't talking. Good God on me. To God be the glory for the things he's done. Hallelujah. I want you to say these five words to your neighbor. And if they don't get excited, hear the prophet. I want you to not talk to them for 10 minutes. I don't care if it's your BBF or BFF or your best friend, your boo. Because their silence is going to kill your miracle. 
Now listen, no, some folk just cool. I don't believe in all that screaming. Be drowning in the pool and see a lifeguard. And go down quietly. When you could have been saved just from one sound. I want you to tell them these five words. And when you say it, say it with passion and power. And I want you to watch their, I want you to watch their behavior. And if their behavior is, uh, listen, man, I told you I was hiding something. You know, actually, that even if God tells you who your wife is, it ain't sanctioned till I tell you. I've been there through every crisis of your life, every greatness of your life. I walked in, I hugged a woman. I heard about it. You don't need a prophecy. You done kissed and announced her. But you know my protection of you. So I told the Lord, when I come, I need you to show me this. Because I will not watch my brother fail another day in his absolute life. I didn't know that this was somewhat the same lady I prophesied to when you brought me through COVID. And you had me in the little building on the little side of the studio. You don't even remember. Then at that time we spoke in the back of an office. I took a picture, we were masked up. I hugged her, I kissed her. She was still single. (laughs) And the Lord told me, tell him, she's going to make up for 14 years of what Satan thought he could stop from getting to your hands. Hear me? I laughed because God sounded like a rapper. This is what he told me. And I'm from the days of LL Cool J and Sugar Hill Gang. He said to me, tell him he found who he loves, right? But this is what he told me, like he was rapping for screamers. Tell him, I didn't actually send her for love. I put a G, I sent her to fit like a glove. There will soon be no room in this building. Because God said in mid 2025, I'm going to send a revival that's going to hit the state of Georgia. Your voice will be one of the gatekeepers to open up the church world again. I'll leave the rest because now it's getting too personal. It's getting too personal. Be seated. Oh no, five words. When you tell your neighbor this, please be serious. Watch your behavior. I want to say something. I can't see without glasses, but right now it must be God because I can see everybody in here. (laughs) Young man, how old are you? 15. Did you ever play sports? Did you stop? What you stop for? Moving? You're not going to believe this unless you run and get excited. The Lord said, tell him, I was getting in him to be one of the greatest, shortest NBA players that they've ever seen. And if you run now, God says, I'll reset what I promised you again. You better run, boy. Go to run. God's got to help you in math. He's got to help you with your grades. Who's, or who's this? She's excited. Can you go down and tell her something for me? Come here, I need to tell you in your ear. I can't say that over the mic. I want to see how she act and see how y'all act.
How does it feel to be a prophet? Because I feel good being you. These five words, and then give me 35 minutes to give a prophetic word, then we're going home. You've got to scream on this. If they don't, how long I told you not to talk to them? All right. Here's what you're going to tell them and see if they've been watching and paying attention. You here and you that are online who will type in the lower thirds. Look at your neighbor and say these five words. It shall come to pass. Grab a neighbor by the hand and say, it shall, it shall come to pass. Ooh. Yes, it will. Come on, new birth. Yes, it will. Come on, children of God. Yes, it will. Get your Bibles, be seated. Higher. Go. I'm in my 60s, but I feel like I'm 30. I feel good. Hold that music. Tell somebody on the other side of you, it shall come to pass. The way you say it from old school is while you're trying to figure it out. Y'all ain't talking on this side. I said while you're trying to figure it out. The Lord has already worked it out. Go ahead. Go ahead and run security. When the man started running, the Lord told me to tell 18 of you these words. Then we go into the word, but everybody will scream. Some of you, five of you out of the eight, five of you out of the, five of you out of the 18 are totally guilty. But the Lord said, because of the scream of the people, case dismissed. And I didn't pick who it was. Uh-oh. Uh oh, don't you judge my praise. All right, there's too much coming through. Get your Bibles, be seated. Shabbat. Thirty minutes, Shabak, y'all pray for me. I see you, Chef Waldron. I see all of you, Dre, all of you. Reverend Clayton, see all of you. Matthew chapter 14. Now push me, Dr. Jamal, from way over there, because this whole sermon will be so prophetic that some of you won't be upset that I didn't call you out. Let me make this very clear for ten folk with a mouth. Just because I don't call you out don't mean he's not calling you up, right? And the greatest prophecy in the world is that which is written. I want to talk over here, but y'all look mean sometimes. But the greatest prophecy in the world, and I'm an ex-pharmaceutical salesman, so I used to look like that too, but the greatest... Prophecy in the world is that which is written. Man can lie, but God's word cannot. 
Yeah, I do want to say one more thing to you, Dr. Brian. If it makes sense, then walk or run and jog, whichever one choose, high five me. Then we'll talk about it when you get time, maybe in 2025. But here we go. I have to teach like this, and now I know why I came, because when you asked me to come, I said, for what? It's not that I don't want to be on one of the greatest stages or the greatest stage in America. It was that everyone does not deserve access to such a level, right? And I'm understanding of that. But there's a difference in the prophetic prediction and premonition. See how quiet y'all got? Most people are using premonition and prediction, but here how, here's how you know a real, true male or female prophet, and you gotta scream on this unless I missed it, they must have a relationship with the written word. I cannot prophesy that you're gonna marry another man even if God showed you he's yours if he's married at the time. Because that disagrees with the scripture. See, I can't come over here again. I? I don't care what feels good to you, you've got to make sure that what you ask for is in accordance. Come on, talk loud, new birth, with the word of God. I don't ever want God to show me who my wife is and she presently married. You keep that on the wraps till she's single. So I got a word, because I told you in the office that I did not want to function in the prophetic as God used me at your request because people need to hear their prophecy through the scripture. And I told y'all 38 minutes ago, since I've been up here for 10 screamers, that God was about to reset your finances, right? Especially the man with the camera taking my picture. God said, I'm returning eight years of your money back to you and I'm gonna show you who I am. Yeah. The Bible said, your eyes have not seen, neither have your ears heard, neither has it entered into your hearts. Help me over here. The good things that God has in store for those who walk up right before him. I prophesied to you 30 years ago, right? Wait, wave your hand at me. We haven't seen each other for 30 years in Maryland. I told you, and was it your son? Okay. Told you and your son this 30 years ago that God was going to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Has it all happened? It, all of it? Because it's about to happen for your whole row. And one of you are being cured of diabetes. I'm not going to, I don't have time to keep, I don't have time to keep going. But one of you, just a few men over from you, is being cured of diabetes. Now, Matthew chapter 14, right? Verse 12, now when he was younger, he tried to text me and say, you still got it. Because he's a jokester. But Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 29, I want to read this story in two places. But before I read it, I want you to look at Psalms 37, verse 23. Psalms 37, verse 23. I need my church, my few members here to talk to me as I teach, and hopefully, Tiffany, it'll hit other of the members who want to be kind to me. The steps of a good man. Are ordered, Bishop Kerry, by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Let me say this while you're standing, while you're trying to stand and yet understand for the 50 people who will shout glory after you catch this. Whatever you're going through right now, even the hell you're going through, God let you step into that.
You're not in this hell situation to burn. You're in it to learn. I'm talking to talkers and you will not come out of it smelling like smoke. As a matter of fact, look down where the devil is under your feet and tell him you don't want this smoke. All right, stay, stay with me. Stay with me. One more time. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Now let's support that with a story. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 29. You've heard these stories. There's nothing in the Bible I can preach that he has not already preached, but I'm going to preach it anyway. Straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship, go before him to the other side. We're prophetically preaching, so when I stop and have you say something from the text, you will say it to a neighbor, and if they get excited, it will activate the scripture. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to the other side. Now, understand where I'm coming from. If you are so nice to people, that you take the same people with you where you're going, you should have stayed where you were. All right, I'm gonna say it one more time. If you're gonna take all of the ungrateful Negroes with you to your new location, then you should have stayed at the location you were. So I say this for screamers, God's not just changing your season, he's changing your zip code too. Look at your neighbor and tell them you're going to have to get through some gates to come to my house. Because God is putting a boundary between your past and your future. Now, Dr. Jamal, I got the time is already fleeting. When he had sent the multitudes away, he being Jesus, he went part to a mountain apart to pray. When the evening was come, he was there alone. I want to say two things from this verse, one thing from the next verse, then I'll preach the rest of my scriptures. Catch this, great audience and the thousands watching around the world, then you will scream. Jesus told you go ahead while he stayed behind so he can make sure what's behind don't follow you where you're going. Right? Here's the bigger picture for screamers. You know when you're close to where you're going as your circle gets smaller. And you know you're almost there when you're alone. I feel like I'm in this all by myself. You right where you need to be. Let me talk to talkers. You were there when everybody needed you, but ain't nobody there now that you need them. But let me make the devil mad. I'm prophetically preaching. Let me make the devil mad for 2,000 of you who were screaming. That's this. Normally I keep my numbers low, but we're going to elevate them because they're here. So scream on this. Some people are jealous of you because they think that because you're alone, you're lonely. I'm alone because I'm finally enjoying the me that God has blessed me to become. Verse 24, but the ship, this is where I'm going to need you to draw closer, was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. One thing from here, then we're going to do gospel preaching. One thing from this scripture, and I'm going to see who goes ballistic because your behavior determines how quickly God's going to do what he does. Now catch this. Dr. Jamal, you are an exquisite theologian and biblicist. I know where you've gone. I know your degrees. You've earned them. You deserve them. And you walk in them. But catch, capture this just in case you never preach this. Every now and then I say something to you, then you text me. It's gone. It's no longer yours. So let me just give you a little tidbit here and see if your church and the thousands scream on this. You ready? The disciples that are in the ship was never in a storm. One more time. We call this exegesis, where the scripture speaks profoundly of itself and tells us with simplicity what it means. Right? 
I said, I got somebody over there who's a theologian. Oh, he wrong now. He can't come back because they were definitely in the storm. Watch this, and then we'll see if you agree. Watch this, and if he gets excited, then you follow the behavior of your leader. The scripture says that what was in the storm it is what was protecting the people. The ship. Read it again. The ship was now in the midst of the sea. See, we feature people, but we don't feature what's protecting those people, right? Oh, hold on. Some of these people that are about to get reset money, you know why? Because they're in this ship. And because they've been in a storm as a result, yet making it because of what God told them to get into. God didn't get into the people. He told the people get into the ship. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm cussing because Baptist people and bloggers, they wait for you to have a Freudian slip. So let me tell you this. A lot of you are going through things, but you have to catch this and get laughter and scream. And that is, don't let nobody talk about the ship you in. If it wasn't for my ship, I wouldn't make it. Y'all ain't done it. That's, that's my ship. Some people preach it, they call it a boat. And people that call this scripture a boat for screamers over here, they're doing it because they want to make your situation look small. See, that's why I kept saying ship, because what some of you are going through, people look at you like, that ain't enough, that ain't nothing. You don't know what it is till you get in the situation that I'm in. And some of you ought to scream on this. You are blessed because you handling your ship like a boat. And the ship was tossed with the waves. The wind was not contrary to the, to the men. It's contrary to the ship. It's trying to stop what Jesus told to get in it from making it to the other side. Oh, y'all, they can't swim through this. They need some new assistance that's built, y'all don't want me to preach it, to make it through storms. My topic, I'll give you my subtopic in a minute. My topic, then you can be seated, but keep your Bibles open, but you got to give God a loud scream, is if the ship could talk. If the ship could talk. The then the ship would be choosing the topic. And I'm going to tell some of you why you made it this far and why you're going to make it and why August is a real date and that you'll be on the other side simply because of this. Through all the hell you're going through, the ship told me to tell you this. You're going to make it for one reason. Ask me why. Because just like the ship, you built for this. Just tell them I'm built for this. I'm built for this. Look at two or three people and mean it, Stephanie, and tell them I'm built for this. Some of you ain't never made bad look so good. Someone asked me, what was glory? You know, how do you give God glory on this note? Y'all can sit after this, but I need my group to stay with me. When you give God glory, it's simply you making God look good in your bad situation. When people can look at you and get confused and don't see you broke and don't know you're depressed and don't know you've been suicidal, that's giving God glory. God Almighty. Be seated. Be comfortable. Be seated in your ship. Not you though, because I need you. 
The fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, it is a spirit. They cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. I thought he was telling them, you can preach to me. It's okay because I'm here. But when I studied it deeper for the front row who were talking, if not, I'll just adopt the second row. This is Jesus telling them, there's no way you can actually see me because the Bible said they thought it was a spirit. But what he did was spoke through the storm and told them, you're going to be okay because everything happening, it's me. The wind blowing, that's me. Y'all, oh, y'all don't believe it. If there was a demon in this story, which there is no devil, talk to me, 30 of you. If there was a demon in this story, then you would have been reading the other story where they were in the ship with Jesus and had to wake Jesus up and Jesus rebuked the wind and the sea and said, peace be still. He is not telling this storm to stop. He's teaching them how to walk through it. Y'all ain't talking. And some of y'all got to stop waiting on things to stop. You hear me talking to you? I'm just waiting on my money to get right. You ain't got to wait on no money. So I got a subtopic. Your media department came to me. You know I don't give topics and subtopics, but I did it because of you. The subtopic is prophetic. If you get excited over this and you got to get excited over something, I hear about 50 of you, I'm tired of jumping up, sitting down. You did it when you were five, Simon says, put your hands on your head. Simon's. Get excited on my subtopic because the ship chose the topic. The storm chose the subtopic. I told you, you don't have to wait on your money and for God to fix your credit. Listen to what God told me to tell you and see if you get happy. The subtopic is watch your steps, not your storms, right? Watch your steps. You better not. <laughs> the reason why some of you are paralyzed is you're giving too much attention to the storm. When Psalm says the steps. This side ain't friendly. All I need is somebody to co-sign. No. All you need to do is what Peter did for screamers. Step out on the word of God. Let me talk to real Christians. Either you sink or walk. Now make the decision. But I tell you what the story's trying to teach you for screamers, and that is I can't stay in the same boat with everybody else. Lord, I'm tired of hanging out with the same folk, talking about the same thing. I'd rather die than to stay with them. So the Lord said, if you're serious, step out. But Lord, it's storming outside. Watch the step. Not the storm. I got 30 minutes. That's what they gave me. It's on there and I like it. Nah, 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 nah. Be careful. That's my Noel Jones. Huh. But now, verse 27 says, straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good, be of be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. 28 said, But Peter answered him and said, Y'all not reading, Lord, if it be thou. If all of this is you and if you are who you say you are, I'm going to see you scream. Let me walk while it's storming. Now I'm saying this to those who heard me an hour ago that ain't talking. Get ready to get homes without down payments. Just get ready. Well, if they do that, they're going to have high interest rates. Not if Jesus is the banker.
You heard me preach at a church called Free Gospel Deliverance Church, 4203 Marlboro Pike in Coral Hills, Maryland, the Honorable uh, Bishop Ralphie Green back in 1993. I got there and got there by mistake real quick, then back to the text. I preached, I was supposed to preach one night, that meeting went 31 days. I needed only one day, and y'all ain't gonna talk, but y'all may, because I didn't have nowhere to preach, and I was a full-time preacher with no appointments at the time. My landlord, because I was renting from, needed her $995. When that call came through, I felt like that was Jesus. The man said, we're gonna give you $1,200. I said, there go my rent. That's all I said. Oh, y'all don't wanna talk about where you're from? I can tell you where I am, but that ain't gonna help you. Right? I get there, the man looks at me and says, who are you? They weren't looking for Prophet Hall. They were looking for the white Prophet Todd Hall from Lexington, Kentucky. I said, well, y'all called my number. I'm here. He said, you preach tonight. Then we're going to put you on the plane and get you out of here. Long story short, it lasted 31 days. Bishop Ralphie Green looked at me. He gave me my check. Back then, I was banking with a bank called First Union, which later became Wachovia, which later became Wells Fargo. All right, y'all ain't going to talk to me. All my stories got receipts. It went, it went from First Union over to Wachovia, then over to Wells Fargo, and I ran the First Union, and I went to do what black people do on payday. We skip lunch, we go get our cash. I went straight. See, you too blessed now, but I remember we zoomed down to the bank on lunchtime. Endorse the back of that paper. We want cash how you want it any way you can give it to me And for folk to feel blessed give me large bills, you know <laughs> I don't talk over there cuz y'all don't talk to me I'm gonna leave y'all on that side. I'm gonna come to the other side <laughs> Listen to me Got to the bank, I endorsed the back of the check. You may remember this. And they told me, you need to wait two hours. I said, my plane leaves in an hour. I got to get to Washington Reagan or whatever it was called in Washington National. I need to get there and fly out. They said, well, sir, you need to wait two hours. I said, is the bank broke? No, it is not. They said, we know Bishop Ralphie Green. 30144, I think it's 420-9300. I don't know how I'm remembering this phone number, but 301-420-9300. He got on the phone. He said, now nah, praise the Lord. Cause he old. He said, praise the Lord. Lord. He said, what, what you doing? I said, I'm trying to make sure I get my money. He said, the check's good. He said, did you look at the check? I said, no. He said, come to the house. I said, I got to catch a flight. He said, you got somewhere to go? No. He said, I'll get you another ticket. I zoomed down 202 Marlboro Pike. I pull on to his property with 90 acres and two Clydesdale horses. Go up into the Clydesdale. I didn't know God was making me visit my future, right? I just got up in there. Uh-oh. He told me, you're going to have to wait and you'll be able to buy a check. He said, but I want you to be introduced to the new broke. I said, what in the world? New broke? I came here broke. I said, I got to get back to pay $9.95 for the rent. He said, listen, I want to ask you a question. Did you look at the amount on the check? And I had not looked at it because I knew what the deal was. So being an ex-pharmaceutical salesman, I could add. <clears throat> 31 days at this price. I know what it is. He said, but you didn't look at it. No, sir. He said, that tells me that you're not in it for the money. I said, sir, I was in it for $9.95, but you said. <laughs> Am I the only person that ever said, I just need to pay my rent? Lord God, I just. He said, uh, let's go back to the bank. We go to the bank. We walk in. They say hi to him because they know him, know him. They say hello to me like they were upset. Hey. And I was like, I apologize for making Bishop Green look bad. And he said, uh, I'm about to show him his money. Do y'all have it ready now? He said, yes. Yeah. So we're going to buy him another ticket. I said, thank you, sir. Because I didn't have money. So we're going to buy him another plane ticket. He said, but I want you to let me uh, mentor you. I said, all right. He said, I want you to let me make you broke again. I said, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> because it seemed like you want this 9.95 times 30 days back, you know? 
He said, will you let me do it? The Holy Spirit rested in me and said, let him do it. I let him do it. This is what happened. And I'm going to see if you got a 30 second yell, dance or leap. He said, give him his money. When I looked at it, looked at the check. He said, the house you're renting, we called ahead of you to ask how much it was. He said, I just gave you a check for the exact amount of what this house is. Oh yeah, I bought it. From day one. Oh yeah. That's why I'm And when I bought the house, I owned it, no mortgage, but I was new broke. That was the broke that felt good. Cause you can't put me out of what I own. And the Lord said, tell all of you, I'm taking you from old broke to a new season in your life. God says, I'm about to pay some things off. Now, let me see if I am an economist at all, my dad being the first black partner on Wall Street to a Jewish firm. Let me tell y'all this and see if you scream more, because that scream was not sufficient. And some of you didn't scream because you're using other people's money, living with other people, so you don't feel the burden. But all of you that are givers and love to help people and you've given your way out of your own blessings and God's about to reset your funds, catch this and scream. Once God pays everything off, whatever money you make, that's for you. Y'all ain't tough. And some of you still didn't hold on to the prophecy. It starts at the end of August. We've been in a storm all year. And that storm has paralyzed some of you from taking steps. Last thing from this chapter, then my next chapter is where my holler is and I'm gonna close. But I need 30 of you to support me because I'm getting tired. And that's this to see if you scream. Jesus walking on water is not a miracle. He's God. Jesus, people preach this, and the Lord showed what a miracle is. He walked on water. Jesus walking on water? If Jesus flew in the sky, I would be amazed, but it's not a miracle. Because you made the birds. If you swim on the water and never come up like a dolphin, I'm fully amazed and enamored, but you God. But the miracle in the text, I'm going to see if you really scream, it's not Jesus walking on water, it's Peter. Let me change that. The miracle is when you do. Y'all ain't talking. The miracle is not about Jesus. Jesus did it in your face for you to do it also. He never does something in your presence that he does not empower you to do when he leaves. Let me say it one more time in case you didn't hear me. He never does anything in our presence that he does not empower you to do when he leaves. The reason why Peter wants to walk on water is because he sees Jesus walking on water. And the reason why Peter never said stop the storm, because he saw Jesus walking while the storm was in session. Now you that are standing up, I hope you're standing up because you're supporting me. But I got one rule across the world. Don't stand up if you ain't gonna speak up. Your stance don't get it, it's your voice. Peter, can I ask you one more thing? I'm sorry, cause I, because I don't get a chance to see you, so I'm talking to you while I'm preaching. Let me say one more thing and give me only future millionaire screams. I don't want, no, 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 no. Hold on. All of you ain't gonna be millionaires. But listen to me, cause you love the Bible. If the storm is strong enough to almost capsize the ship, how can it not throw Jesus and Peter around? Again, 
if they're scared because they feel that they're going to die in the storm because the ship is being tossed with the waves, why isn't the waves tossing Jesus and Peter? Let me make it in English terms. Then I want the front row to either dance or the third row screaming, that's this. Some folk are upset because what's moving them don't shake you. You shaky, I'm stable. Y'all ain't talking. You scared, I'm worshiping. Don't get upset that my posture does not resemble my problem. You know how you got here? I know where you're from, Bethel and Palmetto, but do you know how you got here? I'll tell you, and then you'll scream again, then we're going to my last chapters. You got here, not because you're smart, even though the board know you're smart, not because of this, even though they know what all of your characteristics and abilities are. You really got here walking on water. You leave it to your past folk. They were mouthing you like a storm. Jamal ain't gonna make it. Now they want an appointment to preach in your ship. Ain't this crazy? You would have stayed in Baltimore. I know you would have. I don't care what nobody else say. I'm preaching you the gospel prophetic truth because of legacy, because of whatever. You were already anointed to be great, but God wanted you here. The way I know that, y'all ain't gonna like this either for all you rumors and folk who blog, is God made every place comfortable in Baltimore uncomfortable. He made people call you everything but a child of God, not because you was, just to tell you through God, man, I said, get out of here. Y'all ain't talking. So God made every area where you were the man, he made you a menace. And then he cleaned it all the way up. And now everybody trying to be, buy a ticket to get on your ship. Everybody. Your problems produced you. Your Psalms helped develop you. Now, listen, Dr. Bryant, my last chapter, go to Mark 6, verse 45 through 48, and only do 48. No, I'll read them all. When I do this, let's get ready to fly the kite and go have some brunch. Straightway, same scripture, same story, straightway, the disciples were constrained to get into a ship so that they can go to the other side unto Bethsaida. First thing I want to say there for screamers, at least now where you're going has a name. You knew you were getting married, you just didn't know the who. Now the who is going to show up after you walk through the storm, right? You ain't going to get it on this side. Everything is revealed when you walk through your storm. I wish I could hear y'all back there, but it's okay. He sent the people away. Same story. Looks at my tongue. Same story. Verse 46. And when they had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. Tell your neighbor, same story. And when the evening was come, the ship, uh-uh, same story, was in the midst of the sea. And he alone on the land. Same story. Verse 48, preach this. Come high five me if it makes sense. I am going to now tell you, thank you, leave it on the screen. I'm going to tell you, like I spoke to you about the ship, I'm going to now talk about this verse and see if five folk love the Bible. It's this. I'm telling you that Jesus never intended on meeting them. Because they were afraid, giving too much attention to the storm, verse 48 says he would have passed them by. Uh -oh. Okay, y'all don't want to read it? Coming to him, walking upon the sea, and when he's walking on the sea, scripture tells us would have passed by them. No, no. 50 of you didn't scream because you're looking at him and me to see when to yell. Yell when you catch it. Catch this. 
The only reason why I don't tell you why he didn't pass him by is you read it. There was one big mouth on the boat in Matthew named Peter that spoke. And some of y'all, he's passing you by because you're too quiet in your own dilemma. Somebody in the same situation has to speak. Somebody in your row, you can't have 12 people to each row being quiet. Y'all going, Jesus going to walk right by. But the song said, I'm crying, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others, thou art calling. Oh, you like that. You about to get over thirty thousand dollars as a miracle break rank. Take your run, man, cause you're holding it. Get up on out of there and get your blessing from the Lord. Hey, Slim Jim, sit in this seat and act like security guard. Savior, let me hear B flat. All right, Savior. Savior, hear my humble cry. Y'all help me wow on others. Hey, Lord. Thou art calling. All that music, we gonna come together in the B flat. Do not pass me by. Look at somebody down your row, at least four people deep, and tell them, we getting out of this because of my mouth. Yeah. Tell them, you stay quiet as long as you want to. But once I get a glimpse of Jesus, I... <laughs> Just touch them, I tell them, I've got a feeling. Don't lie, that everything is going to be all right. Tell them again, I, 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 I got to feel it. You still be flat. You still ain't holding nobody's hand. But get somebody by the hand and make that your partner for the rest of the service. And tell your neighbor, we gonna be all right. Tell him because I cried and I cried. scary but tell him I promise you that if you and I call Jesus by the end of the night this too shall pass the storm is passing over y'all not preaching like you should weeping may endure for a night but you out not the s-u-n but the son of the living god shake your neighbor's hand and tell that brother or sister if you ever been in a storm you've got to call for help the help i called on some called him wonderful some called him counselor some called him mighty God. Some called him everlasting father. But at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Say yeah.
tell them, don't get mad at me. All I'm doing this morning is showing you how to take steps through your storm. Don't avoid the lion's den. Don't avoid the fiery furnace. But let the devil know you should have killed me while you had me. But believe I'll run on and see what the end's gonna be. Tell your brother or sister, when God brings you out, that includes your family, your sons and your daughters, your nieces and your nephew. The storm is passing over. You're not preaching in here. Grab somebody's hand and tell your neighbor the storm. somebody's hand and be careful whose hand you grab and say neighbor after this confession I'm gonna leave you alone because if you don't praise me or praise God with me on this side of my life I will not see you when I get to the other side tell them all I want to tell you is I've had heartaches like this before disappointment by the score i've got the victory at last because this too shall pass but if the storms don't cease and just in case the winds keep on blowing my life is gonna be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce but in the word of God I've got a hiding place and it keeps me steadfast unmovable despite the time but if I'm closing. Stop it. Told y'all don't practice. Don't let big churches scare you. I'm about to close, Reverend Brian, watch this. Look at me. No, no, don't you dare move. Don't you go back to that seat. You left because your steps were ordered. Yes, sir. What got you out of the seat? The word of God. And if I say this in your scream, you'll catch it. You that moved out your seat, you done moved to the other side. Look at somebody act like you still can preach and still got a little Baptist holler in you and say, neighbor, I've got a fear. I gotta close. Yep. Here is, hallelujah. All of you that truly believe that by the end of August, your steps are gonna get you somewhere, I'm gonna give you 60 seconds to dance. Then after that, I need your attention. 
in the 60 seconds. Dance not because of where you're going, but because you didn't die where you are. You got 60 seconds. One, two. For you get somebody in the same boat and tell them don't get jealous if I get wealthy without you tell them all you got to do is follow my steps so tell them when I dance you dance and we'll build houses somewhere around the world one two three one And when the music stops, you have a voice. Come on, new birth, you have a voice. Come on, children of God, you have a voice. Pastor Brian, thank you, I'm closing with this. I want you to hold someone's hand and look at me. I'm closing with this. I like that. I'm still a sanctified preacher who loves the word of God. Still a praiser even with a bad knee. I praise him in the midst of the storm. Listen to this. I didn't get my high five so maybe you was withholding it. But capture this. God is about to do for every member in your church and for my members who sacrifice to drive and fly here on wedding anniversaries when they should be celebrating somewhere in uh, some island. They're about to get what God gave to Peter. Here I go. You ready? They're about to receive, tell somebody I'm about to get what God gave to Peter. 
That's not enough times. Articulate that to someone else. I'm about to get what God gave to Peter. You are then asking me, what is that? When I tell you, if you jump for me, I'll know you love me. If my bishops jump for me, I'll know that they love me. They should have danced because they came into something that they could have became if they'd act like they were at their own church. They came here with a congested worship that should have been released like a child. Because you're not a bishop when you walk into something like this. You're a recipient of a vision. When you step into something that you're trying to get to, you ain't got time to gaze. You got to praise. Look, if God makes a friend invite you to their mansion, that's not to make you jealous. That's to prepare you for what he's doing for you. He never brings you into something to visit. You brought into that to learn. Capture this. I'll see if you give me the high five and that's this. He's about to give all of us what he gave Peter. Ask me what? Oh, you didn't have to do that, but ask me what? When I say this, if you are economically sound and remember I said he's about to reset your finances, you should be able to dance, scream, or jump for at least 30 seconds because this is big. This is what he did for Peter, which is, which is what he's going to do for you and I. He told Peter when Peter said, let me come, he told Peter, come. When he told Peter, come, this is what I got from the scripture, and I'm hoping some of you go ballistic. He said, when you come, if you can walk on water, it's because I just made your liquid solid. God is about to make, that's half the battle. I need you to make my liquid solid. I need my resources to stop being so volatile. To stop being so shaky. I need to wake up and not think about how I'm going to do this and that. Look at your neighbor for the last time and tell him, hey, baby, your liquid is about to become solid. So is your marriage. So is your entrepreneurial skills. So is your business. So is the future of your children. It's going from volatility to being solid. Especially you that are making a sound in the storm. Because what you're telling God is order my steps. Everything going on around you is just to distract you to see can you stay focused. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hold that neighbor's hand who's being debt free right now. And he walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. Come on. And the joy that we share as we tarry there, none other shall ever know. Come step on this stage with me because I want to say something to them with both of our presence. And you make me look good. So turn around. Man. Yeah. You know you dress like that every Sunday. Come on. You're holding the hand of a person who God is paying off all their super debts. You will always have a light bill. You always have an energy bill. We're talking about the bulk of your debt. I ain't paying for nothing 30 years. I ain't paying for nothing five. I'm not giving you more interest than I have in principle. The power 
to live in a season called paid in full. What does that season look like? I cannot lie to people because I try to be an example. I'm not rich, but look at me. I have no debts. And I haven't for about nine years. I don't wake up wondering. Only concern I would have is I'm getting older and I'm feeling things in the body I never felt before, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Money is not my problem, my shipmates are. Wow. Wow. Jealous of every time we dock in a new season. You're holding the hand of a person whose credit is coming up a hundred points. See, I'm trying to give you a good shipmate. You're holding the hand of a person who's about to move into their home within the next 60 days. And when people ask how, tell them I went to a meeting one night. My soul. <laughs> My heart wasn't right, but something got a hold of me. Last time, you're holding the hand of a person who's being healed from the crown of their heads yes, to the soles of their feet. Come on, receive this. From the crown of your heads to the soul of, that's even mental health. From your mind down to your feet. The old Bishop David Ellis would say, be healed, be set free, and be delivered. As you're holding that person's hand, Again, for the last time, go ahead and speak, baby. God is making your liquid what? Again, brothers, God is making our liquid what? He's making our marriages what? Education for our children what? Everything about us from August forward would be solid. You're at the end of the most volatile season of your life. Young people, alphas and Zs, y'all have got a good future. And the way you learn how to navigate is watch how we handle storms. No matter how sick a mother is, if she's got children, she's going to work. You've got to take steps while it's raining. You got to walk even where there's no umbrella. Sometimes you just got to be proof that you just came out the worst season of your life. Now you're holding the hand of a person who's going to own their own business. Walk within the innovativeness of their conscience. And be able to see things, put it to paper, and then put it to practice. You've been employees for a long time. Let the other E out of your life. Entrepreneur, not evangelist, entrepreneur. Now the hand you're holding, if they've been a worshiper, keep holding it. If they haven't, slowly release yourself from that person and leave them on the other side. 